Welcome to the Kevin Bass Show Long Form Podcast. If you have an idea that you take from this podcast that you want to apply to your own life, you should always talk to your doctor before doing so and never construe anything you hear as medical advice. And with that, enjoy the Kevin Bass Show. It is now widely accepted that eggs have no meaningful impact on blood cholesterol levels. Dietary cholesterol is said not to impact blood cholesterol. But is this true? The impact of eggs on dietary cholesterol and health really depends on background diet and genetics. Now, it's true that the impact of dietary cholesterol on blood cholesterol is quite modest. And it only impacts about 20 to 30% of the population. But on the other hand, almost nobody knows whether they are in that 20 to 30%. So some caution might be warranted in those who are pursuing optimal health and or find their LDL cholesterol levels a little high. Here is a figure from a recent review paper called Meta-Regression Analysis of the Effects of Dietary Cholesterol Intake on LDL and HDL Cholesterol by Vincent et al., published in the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition in 2019. In this paper, they showed, putting together 55 studies, 2,652 volunteers, that LDL cholesterol is consistently changed when dietary cholesterol is changed. Now, there's a big variation in these studies, and a lot of that can be accounted for by the fact that when one is consuming a diet low in dietary cholesterol and then sees a big change in, in dietary cholesterol, LDL cholesterol changes tend to be quite high. Whereas in a diet with very or moderate or high cholesterol intake, which is typical of the average Western diet, LDL increases will be substantially lower. So there is some variability, but what is consistent is that there is a modest to substantial change in blood cholesterol levels in response to changes in dietary cholesterol levels. And this can be seen in this graph here. But does that translate into health outcomes? To look at that, let's see a public paper published in the British Medical Journal called A Consumption and Risk of Cardiovascular Disease, Three Prospective Cohort, U.S. Cohort Studies, Systematic Review, and Updated Meta-Analysis. Here we can see in the supplemental figure that it really depends on what you're replacing eggs with. If you're replacing eggs with processed red meat or even unprocessed red meat in this cohort, you get an increase in risk of cardiovascular disease. But if you replace them with fish, poultry, legumes, nuts, whole grains, or fine grains, potatoes, re reduced fat milk, low fat cheese, high fat cheese, or yogurt, you see no statistical, statistically significant difference. And interestingly, replacing Yogurt for eggs seems to almost produce a benefit to the heart while replacing full fat milk for eggs again produces negative outcomes, worse cardiovascular disease. So what's clear here is it really depends on what you replace eggs with. This is confirmed by a new study where they looked at in all the different cohorts conducted, the risk of various different heart-related outcomes, stroke, cardiovascular disease, death, heart failure, cardiovascular disease itself, et cetera. And they compared these, they compared these two they, they summed all of these together 
and then they looked and see to see what is the total effect of eggs. And what they found is for each additional egg in the diet, there's about a 4% increased risk of one of these outcomes. Okay. A 4% increased risk, which is not small. I mean, some could say it's small, but in terms of death, hey, that's not a small increase because death is a very serious matter, clearly. Okay. Yet, there's a huge amount of heterogeneity between these studies. Some studies show an increase in risk and some studies show a decrease in risk. Most of the time, when it's a decrease, it's not statistically significant. When it's an increase, sometimes there are some statistically significant increases, but there is a wide range of differences between those consuming eggs and those consuming other foods in terms of the outcomes in these studies. You can see all over the board the outcomes. That's probably accounted for by the diet. The dietary, the background diet is probably very important. And when they're consuming a poor quality diet at baseline, eggs may have less of a negative impact. But when they're consuming a higher quality diet at baseline, such as high in fish, legumes, nuts, especially, eggs might be negative. What does seem to be the case is that eggs are better than, say, meat and butter or processed meat for that matter. But they're probably worse than many plant foods. So it always depends on compared to what. And that probably accounts for much of the variation that we've seen in different studies over the years about eggs and their relation to death. Compared to what? How are you designing the studies? and What are you comparing eggs to? Again, in the context of unhealthy diets, eggs seem to produce benefits since they replace less healthy foods. But in the context of healthier diets, egg may, eggs may be slightly harmful they, by displacing healthier foods that have a lower impact on diet on blood cholesterol. So a practical takeaway here might be that if LDL cholesterol is a little high, and diet quality is otherwise excellent, it might be advisable to try replacing eggs with another source of protein that is lower in dietary cholesterol. Ideally, this should be done using a lipid test to look at before and after values of blood LDL cholesterol. But if the diet is otherwise unhealthy, maybe rich in uh, butter, meat, eggs might be a good replacement for those foods to produce better health outcomes, pending other changes to make the diet further more optimal. But overall, eggs seem to have a modest impact on cardiovascular disease and death. It's probably not going to make a very large difference, but it could make a very small difference, and it will probably make a larger difference if compared to an otherwise healthy diet. And that is that this video's take on eggs, dietary cholesterol, cardiovascular disease, and death. I hope you've enjoyed the video. I hope you enjoyed the podcast. Please check me out on patreon.com at Kevin and Bass, where you can donate and make this podcast possible. Also check me out on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok, where you can find my latest thoughts on the latest controversies and findings within health science. Also check me out at The Kevin Bass Show, both on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and YouTube. I hope this podcast was useful to you. If it was, please leave me a five-star review on Spotify or Apple Podcasts. See you guys in the next episode.